fiercely. When was the last time that we saw each other? I think it was Western Beach, wasn't it? I think it was next to the paint shop. Uh, that sounds dodgy. Oh, <laughs> it does a bit. A proper job. Yes. Proper job. Yes, you had your bike. Have you still got yeah. that bike? Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's in a garage in my, in my old house. I haven't moved it yet, but um, still got you, it. You, yeah, you you may want to move that before you finalise moving house, mate. Yeah, probably, but it's nice and warm in the garage. Um, when I move it here, it'll be wet on the dry drive. Um, I just can't believe like it's been so long. It's been at least four years. Has yeah. to have been. Yeah, because we planned some stuff to go to the beach again. I couldn't do it. Then you couldn't do it. Then I was. Well, I think. Field. I think what you'll find, mate, is what we planned is we asked you round and you never got back to us. Yes, I was in the <laughs> middle of, yes, I remember that. And what happened is I bought a house with my friend and I'm pretty sure it was three and a half years ago, something like that, seven months of redoing the house up week by week it was horrible really? yeah um that was also when i was traveling for work to italy three weeks in a <laughs> row so i was like monday morning fly out whoa whoa Milan. whoa 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 stop that mate yeah why, why are we working in italy <laughs> yeah oh yeah so i would say uh, <laughs> let's start there i yeah, mean christ man so, dude yeah there was like yeah you know what I mean? Like, that's why I didn't get back to anyone. Like, the amount of people that messaged me in that, yeah. I would call it a year of his life, my life. It was just graft. It was just absolute graft. And you know, when people advertise grafting on LinkedIn, on social media, yeah. like, it's something like you do at Gary V. When it's nice, it's enjoyable. I call bullshit on that. I did. I enjoyed the first two weeks, and I hated the rest of it. Like, for real. Yeah, it's hard work. So, doing the house up was tiring. It was exhausting because we walked in, and it was like, I walked in with an idea. I'm gonna do the walls. Oh God. Yeah, we ripped out. We ripped out the living room. We ripped out every bathroom. Every Everything was ripped out in the whole house. Yeah, it You're was not that meant bad. To have those, mate. You're not meant to get rid of those. Yeah, but we like to live on the edge, you know. So we just, <laughs> you know, what, sod it. We're gonna get rid of it. Um, but I think, yeah, I think very like four years ago was exactly when I started getting on the journey of buying a house with my housemate because yeah. um, we got along at a time. So I got. So I started dating my girlfriend. I bought a house and I changed jobs in the same week. Mate, you're a glutton for punishment. That is insane. Yeah. Why would you do that to yourself? I think it was just one. I wasn't aware what I'm doing. Like I didn't weigh in the consequences of each of those three actions in my life. Obviously. <laughs> yeah. And I'm pretty sure that I didn't know like, where am I heading? Like buying a house, I had this idea and then, you know, getting a relationship was this idea and then changing yeah. jobs was this idea. Yeah. And you know me, I'm always like up for a challenge. So I was like, yeah, let's do it. Which, I mean, I'm at the end of that journey because, you know, where I am now, it's like, it's another house and you have another job and the same girlfriend. So something's panned out. Same girlfriend. Again. That's good. Different house. I used to work in Italy. I'm traveling from Bristol. Oh, no, no, that was mental. <laughs> Not from Bristol, from London. Are you in London? No, I was traveling Bristol, London train and then fly to Italy, fly back to London, train back to Bristol. That will so be too easy. You still didn't from say what you were doing in Italy, mate. Yeah, so I work for Nokia. You know the company that used to make phones. Oh, they used phones. to make they used to make good phones yeah, back in the day. Yeah, yeah. Three to ten, mate, best phone I've ever had. Three to ten, you could kill with it. <laughs> you could. Yeah. 
and if you throw it from like high enough, it probably goes through to that like South Africa, Australia, through the whole core. Absolutely. Land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Except it's tough Poland, enough. Because Poland's tougher than Nokia. But um yeah, so they had this part of business that was related to Bell Labs, uh, that was uh creating a technology of the um virtual networks, but so basically it was SD WAN. Mm-hmm. Rather than having wide area network, they would create virtualization for the network, which was a badass concept. Uh, I'm not sure how I got that job because I mean I knew virtualization and I knew like networking, but Yeah, but did I you learned... know anything about software defined networks, mate? No. Right. <laughs> that was that was the good thing about um Nokia. Was they didn't want anyone who knew a lot about the networks because it's a bit of a clean slate. Yes. They is. wanted someone who want, is willing to learn. So it's like Well that, that's you. Now. That's you in that's space. Me. Yeah. So it's like sick. I didn't know how boring it's gonna end up being, but you know, that's another story. Um because it's a lot of just copy paste templates, like there's no creativity there. Um but I got the job and I really enjoyed it for the first six months because for the first two, three months, we were like getting grip of like what images to use on the VMs, how to configure BGP pairing, blah, 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 like Linux stuff. It was great. And then we got projects assigned. I was assigned on a project I can't talk about, but it was quite significant. And it was based in London and Italy. It was Rome and Milan. Oh, mate. I enjoyed the dream. Tra- yeah, I enjoyed traveling. Don't get me wrong, I loved it. But I think what spoiled it, it was doing the house up on the weekend, plus trying to maintain a healthy relationship with my partner. Um, so yeah, that was a bit of a challenge because if you can think of it as if I would be, you know, single and live on my own in a rental place, best job ever. I'm in a different part of the world every week. But if you add to that relationship and doing the house up as potential investment, things get a bit more complicated because I could be Monday to Friday in Milan, come back on Friday at like 11 p.m., see my girlfriend, wake up at 8 a.m. on Saturday, drive to the house and graft till 11, midnight, one o'clock, go to bed, see my girlfriend, or not, depends on, you know, how busy the weekend was. Yeah. And then Sunday, you know, get ready for a plane at 6 a.m. in London and, you know, oh, the way we go. So, yeah, it was tough. Um, which is Mate, gonna... it's, it sounds, it sounds tough, Jakob. It sounds like it was an absolute ball like me having to fly to Milan, you know, absolutely. I read a lot of books, though. <laughs> Like, the only thing that I really got out of that was reading a lot of books. What, you um, didn't get out of it that you would actually go into Milan? <laughs> you know, it's different when you travel for work, because... No, it's not. Every time I go to London, I run around like a crazy person. I love it. I think I'm the same, though. Like, OK, yeah, sorry. I did read a lot of books. And, and I, any, I spent... anyway, hang on, whoa, whoa, let me stop you dead there. What, what is this, Jacob? Where's the where's the old Jakob? You couldn't have matured this much in four years, mate. I I think I did. I <laughs> think I did. I think generally, like, like a few people that I talk to, they literally don't believe that like I'm the same person as I was five, four, five years ago. It's polar opposites. If you don't mind me saying to something, so that I could actually yeah. be quite rude. It's polar opposites, mate. I the last time I saw you, were, you were running around like a kid, high on E numbers. And and now you're sitting there looking like a really well-groomed, sexy mother effer. Um, y- y- you were looking far too good to be true, mate. Aww. <laughs> this is the moment I ask if you want to marry me or should well, I Well, I'll say to... yes, mate. <laughs> Steph, you're out. John, you're in. Um, yeah, she probably heard that I get smacked later, which is fine. I completely deserve that. You may like it. Um, I kind of do, though, I think. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, 
first of all, I'll, I'll take that as a compliment because um, I didn't like that about myself. The fact that I can't stand still, like I can't stop and be content. I can, yeah. you know, take a moment and like enjoy where I am. Um, I remember chasing, you know, the money bag. I remember chasing like the titles, yeah, all of that. And like, I kind of feel like when I was in the swing of, you know, doing the house app and new job, new relationship, that stuff would keep me going. But it was just like packed to the point where I had no time to think. So you never got to the point. Like, I never got to a point when that was happening that, you know, I'm I'm just going to think what I want to do. No, because constantly my mind was occupied by stuff that I needed to doing. It was either how you. I, I, I generally think I couldn't get more busy than I, I. I still went to the gym. So when I was in Nokia, I would wake up at like five thirty, go to the gym, drive to Nokia office, come back home and work on a house when I wasn't traveling. When I went to Milan. I have a picture, there is uh, Milan's, um, on the outskirts of Milan, there's a gym. And I am quite, like, I was 93 kilograms, but I was quite um, low body fat. Yeah. I, basically, I would rent a car every time I'm in somewhere. I would rent a car, and obviously, after work, everyone would go for a drink, and I would get in a car and go and see the town, where in Rome, I would put hazards on because if you put hazards on, you can park everywhere. Yes. I literally in front of the Colosseum, I put the hazards on, walk out of the car, the people shouting at me, a guy is beeping. I'm like, I'm in Italy, I really don't care. I took a few pictures, I took a selfie, I looked around, got back to the car, and drove somewhere else. So I've seen every city that I visited, um, mm-hmm. and gyms as well. So I befriended a guy in Milan who let me in for like three or four euros at some point. Uh, ask me a few things. How do you train this? Da, blah, 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 diet, blah, blah, blah. And I have a picture on Google Maps with me in the middle flexing with two of them. One of them was the owner. <laughs> you could have like, sent that to me, mate. I, I'll, I'll find it later. It's basically his life goals, right? When you go travel and you befriended a guy who owns a gym. Um, so yeah, like I, I, I think after that, um, I think the biggest breakthrough was that um, I got diagnosed with ADHD last year um, because I knew I had it. Yeah, um, that was um, mid lockdown. So should I talk about NHS real quick or should I completely avoid the topic? Because it's really interesting. You can talk about it if it's positive. If it's negative, I won't have it. Let me just say that with the public service, I was quoted around 21 year queue to get diagnosed fully. And then I found a private place that did that in two weeks. Um, and they completely like they agreed, yeah, ADHD, because I knew about it since I was like 15. Mm. Um, but those are the times when you would get diagnosed and you'd hear, there's nothing we can do, mate. I'm like, oh, lovely. I'm just going to just bounce off the walls. Super. Fantastic. Yeah. And then scold me for not paying attention on the class that I'm not interested in um, and tell me I am shit at maths. And I'm like, fantastic idea. Tell me that I have a problem and then leverage that problem against me by treating me like a normal person. Quote, I quote, normal. A person that is not diagnosed with X, Y, Z. Mm-hmm. Um, so that kind of I had to learn how to be confident, even though I thought um, my friends were smarter than me. Um, at least I was good looking. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to hold up to that. <laughs> Mate, you got that in spades. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know what I mean, like, at least there's that. So I'm going to hold on to that. Never mind, I'm probably daft. Because in my mind, the fact that I couldn't focus meant I'm an idiot. Because oh, everyone around crazy. me... Would... Uh, yeah, no, now I'm aware of that. But it would be nice if I would tell that to 16-year-old me. Yeah. where I wasn't aware, the peer pressure and stuff like that, you know, and I was just some, just an average dude, over, like good looking average person. That's better. Yeah, that's more like me. And then, yeah, last year, it, like, it hit me that maybe I'm chasing shit, not because I'm 
not able to settle. Maybe there is some problem with balance in my head that needs yeah. to be addressed with medication. And that started the journey of like, you know, testing new meds and um, having ups and downs with it. But at the end of the day, I got right now on medication that it's it just, it didn't change who I am, but it, it just matters you out slightly. Yeah, it helps me not react to certain things. It makes mm. it puts me more in control because um, I still fidget sometimes. I still, I don't know, sometimes I don't listen to someone says to me because I drift away, but it's a lot more aware. Like I'm fully aware I'm doing it. It's not like, oh, oh, I'll drift away. I'm like, oh, I am drifting away. I know this rather than being, you know, 10 minutes into your thought like, oh, where am I? Like this kind of thing. So I think that's as well as part of where I quickly, like quickly, four years matured because that definitely helped me um, kind of invest and play my cards towards my strength of heart character um, rather than, you know, running like a headless chicken through Milan with McDonald's in left hand and then Google Maps in right hand because that's, you know, what was happening. Um, yeah. And I don't think I lost myself in a way that I still am the same person, but a lot more centered. I think that's the good way of putting it. I actually think you you might find a bit more about yourself from this approach. Yeah, yeah. Because that, you're actually giving yourself time. You know, you're not having nice to busy to, yourself with everything. Yeah, and you're nice to yourself because yeah. usually when you're in a rush like that, you don't have time to be nice to yourself. All yeah. it is is just do, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. You, can't, you can't live like that. It's like, it's impossible. So, um, yeah, I think because I made a step of, you know, I need to get diagnosed. And the worst part was I knew I have it. Like, it wasn't like, you know, a revelation that I wasn't aware of it. Like, I fully knew I have it. And it's like the worst spectrum you can probably have because it's inattentive and hyperactive, which is ridiculous. Yeah. Um, so that's what really made me angry at some point. And I kind of regret not doing it earlier, but, you know, I let that go quite quickly because you can't really change time. So, yeah, big stuff, big stuff. What about you? Where do I begin? So let's let's start off. Firstly, well done, mate. Well done on everything you just said. I think it's uh, you've got a little lot about yourself and pushing yourself forward in the way that you have. I think it's, it's going to just be to your benefit. Um, yeah. so, and plus you are far too good looking, at least, you know, give me a little bit of that. <laughs> so for people who are listening, yeah, I was no, just kissing everybody. Um, so yeah, so let's, let's, the last time that I saw you was outside proper job. Yes. I was with the wife, you were by your bike. Um, we had a long conversation and then Hannah and I went off. One way you went off in the opposite direction. Since then, I'm going to condense this in the shortest fashion I possibly can. Since then, I've had two jobs, currently unemployed, still have long COVID. Oh, by the way, I've got long COVID. Um, and that brings us up to date. Nice. <laughs> nice. If that sounds like you, though, not the long COVID part. The oh, Thanks, man. The, uh, <laughs> yeah, how are you feeling about long COVID, first of all? Like, how is your health now? Because um, just to add to that, um, we live in a problematic world, especially me and you, as even though you're unemployed, you fully, you know, you know in and out of the internet. Um, and it's quite a dangerous resource where everything is truth now. Yeah. There's no filtering. So, you know, um, I found out from the ultimate source of truth called reddit that there are people who fully believe um and try to propagate the knowledge that um we live in like a a, a soup bowl and if you get on a ship on a, if you get on a ship you can get to the edge of the soup bowl ah oh, flat earthers yeah they're fascinating there's yeah, these they people as well they're so idiots, but they're fascinating idiots yeah because there's no gatekeeping anymore because of internet because library exactly. at least has the resources that have been one way or another verified. So with COVID, you know, I've been called a sheep by a few people before. 
I've been told it that I wear a mask and that basically government, you know, I am a puppy for a government. Um, all of that nice stuff from friends that you want to hear. So yeah. is it scam then? Why did you make it up? Hmm? <laughs> It's it's difficult, isn't it? You you try and come from an area of intelligence. You try and think to yourself that maybe what scientists are saying is true, and maybe what a lot of things that you read aren't true. Um, when COVID first hit, um, I think it was you know I think we started learning about it, didn't we? Really, sort of the end of 2019, from what I remember. And I, I initially said, ah, oh, it, it won't come over here, it'll be absolutely fine, you know, it'll probably, like, 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 um, uh, swine flu. It sort of hit the whole world, but only a very small amount of people seem to have it. And I thought it'd be roughly the same with this. And then when they turned around and they said, oh, actually, it's a respiratory disease, I thought, oh, I'm bollocks. Uh, because I have got bad lungs, I have got asthma, uh, I've had it since I was seven, and I, I know every single time that I get a head cold or anything similar, uh, it goes straight into my chest, which turns into a chest infection, and then, uh, you know, <laughs> pneumonia and <clears throat> uh, and stuff like that. So I kind of played it safe. I wore a mask. Um, and... <laughs> I'm a sheep. I wear a mask as well. I, and I'm proud to be a sheep, to be perfectly honest with you, Jakob. You know, I mean, when it's you've got to, in a situation like this, you can't think about yourself. You've got to think about others. Why and do we wear the mask, though? It's not for me. No, it's for other people. Yeah, exactly. So it's a bit selfless, isn't it? it? It absolutely is. The thing is, you don't know what is affecting other people you walk past the street. You don't know. If you were to see me, you'd think, wow, he's a really fit individual. But I've got bad lungs. Thanks, Jacob, for the for the thumbs up there. I may appreciate that. Uh, but I've got bad lungs, which means I've got a weakness. So when I got COVID, um, things spiralled very quickly. I suffered from... <laughs> my lungs were deformed. Both of them were deformed badly. And I suffered from silent asphyxia, where I was suffocating in my own body. My um, for people on the podcast that have listened to this before, I apologise. I know I'm saying this a lot, uh, and I did dedicate a whole episode to this. Um, my well, I need to listen to that. It, well, you, you can do. Or I'll just tell you now. Uh, my blood oxygen. Yeah. <laughs> my blood oxygen hit 84. Um, I was slipping in and out of consciousness um, when the paramedics. Came, well, I. I Listen, there's a lot of gory details, which is in episode three. Um, cut a long story short, and a very repetitive story that a lot of people have heard. Um, I'm now getting better, but I have, from long COVID, I have developed a heart condition. Um, it's too much. Yeah, that's right. Yes, that's right. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yes. So I've had to stop powerlifting. Uh, I've had to kick up the cardio. Um, which is no mean feat. I enjoy cardio. Um, That's a lie. No <laughs> one enjoys cardio. I much prefer lifting, mate. You know, and and the thing is, it, you are a sexy man, mate. You are. I mean, you're there laughing now. You are a I'm sexy man. I'm, sorry. I'm just fishing. That's all. <laughs> I know, but I'm I'm more than happy to give you the compliment, mate. I, I don't know when give the it. last time I met somebody as handsome as you. So I'm more than happy to give you that compliment, but. It is wearing quite quite thin, so you know, don't push that compliment boat too much. Um, you know, just, just FYI. So, so I've had to kick the cardio up, which is fine. Um, you know, so I've I've gone from a twenty one and a half stone power lifter uh, down to just under sixteen, uh, which is okay, not bad. You know, nice. Um, but yeah, going back to what you were saying about people calling you a sheep and stuff. I firmly believe that everybody is entitled to believe what they want. But there is a very thin line between what people believe and what actually is the truth. You mean there is a line between opinion and the fact? There, exactly, yes. And the problem is now with Facebook and social media, people read something and think it's a fact. They won't go out. Not everybody. I'm not generalizing really, really badly here. Be, more, more often than not, people will read something and take it as gospel. 
they won't then double check themselves. So they read something and say, oh, well, masks don't protect me. They protect you. I'm not going to bother wearing it, you know, rather than people thinking, hang on. There could be people out there that have got autoimmune diseases that have got bad lungs, bad hearts and are in a risk area. And there's no thoughts of their common man. They're just thinking, oh, well, I won't bother because it's not going to protect me. Bollocks to it, um, which is awful. And That's selfish. That's just selfish. Very. Because, for example, my grandpa, he's 96. Wow. And to put it mildly, he's on his way out, basically. Oh, That's sorry. life. That's all right. No, I, I, out of all people, after my brother's cancer, my heart problems, out of all people that I know, like, I think everyone's going to agree that I'm one of the, like, most life cycle aware person. Like, yeah. we all going to go and it's okay. Like, I made complete peace with it. Um, but to make sure he's around for a bit longer, just because he's, he's not suffering, he's fully he's fully capable of doing things. He's just already tired. He says to me, he wakes up and he's like, oh, still here. Like, you know what I mean? Um, but he, he loves doing things. And I, you know, I try to see him every time I visit. Um, but to the point is we were, everyone in my family wears their mask. Everyone in my family avoids crowds only because if we go and God forbid, he's going to contract COVID. That's going to be end, and it's going to be a painful end to his beautiful journey. So everyone goes out of the way to make sure no one brings COVID to him because maybe he wants to be around for another summer. Like he generally, you know, still loves life. Um, so when I hear from, I used to hear from um, what used to be a close circle friends that, you know, it's a, it's all about politics and control. I'm pretty sure with our phones in our pockets, we are in later, left, right and centre. The conversation that we have will probably listen to. Our phones are constantly listening. God knows if they take pictures, videos or not. Like, I, I, I don't know that. So they definitely um, do of you, mate. That's the last compliment. <laughs> I can hear the crowds, like, <laughs> shouting my well, name right telling now. Me, telling me to shut up. No, no, they, Jay, <laughs> I'll take a t-shirt in a minute. Um, but yeah, um, it's it's it made me angry. I got really cross because yes. I don't care if someone calls me a sheep. What what made that, that those comments and comparing it to a slaughter of human beings in Auschwitz is two lines crossed. Like it's just too much. So yeah. I got I would get angry because. It's selfish. It's really selfish approach where you completely disregard that maybe not everyone's healthy. Maybe not everyone's. Healthy. It's like people parking on a pavement with complete disregard of a person in a wheelchair. I'm like, mm, yes. what if something happens to me and I'm going to be in a wheelchair? Would I appreciate someone pointing attention to someone that parked like that? I, I definitely would. Like, there's no doubt yeah. about that. So I'm going to go and point it out. Like, some people may disagree. That's none of your business. I'm like, mm, why don't we treat our people around us the way we want to be treated it's such a simple exactly. premise yes. you know and and with covid sparking so many like internet driven speculations like on top of that i got rid of social media the only social media i have right now is messenger and whatsapp to actually chat with other human beings um i don't have instagram anymore um i have a library of pictures for you don't worry i kept a copy um <laughs> thanks man yeah you're welcome um and they were interested, uh, five pounds for a pack. That's a shameless plug right there. But I got rid of the but how, social how, media. How do people get a hold of you, mate? You're not on social media. <gasps> Big problem. Yeah, I think the thing is, though, most people don't give a shit about me. It's as simple as that. I'm not oh. that important. I'm yeah. not that important. No one is. No yeah. one cares about your posts. Like, that's the truth. That's the reality of social media. It's a wrong name. It should be a sales gallery or something because it's all yeah. used to sell us stuff the real connection is this real connection yes. is to talk to my partner after work the real connection is to call my friend text them whatsapp them video call see them not social media like they i think it's i think social media divide people in two groups there's a group that my partner is in she's basically 
all her content on Instagram is either knitting that she watches is knitting cute animals. That's it. Yeah. Like she doesn't get her life ideas or you know opinions from from social media. She just goes on it and says, "Look, cute dog." I'm like, "Oh, that's cute, right?" And there's the other group, the people who live for Instagram. And I used to be one of those those people. Where there's nothing wrong with that. But when I woke up one day, and the first thing I had in my head when I opened my eyes was, I need to post something. I was like, "That's a problem." Really? Done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I had five thousand followers. It was ridiculous. Well people would people. Uh, thank you. <laughs> but. I say that 5,000 followers because to me it meant something like I am someone in this world. Truth is, if you really step back to the level of like space station, you're like a grain of something, half of a grain of something. You really don't matter. And it's a harsh truth. Like social media, pro, you know, it pri it, it's like it's using our loopholes in our brains to never mind fool us into you know having an idea that this is the life we want it makes you feel bad about yourself because at the end of the day you start comparing your life to other people and as everyone knows comparison is theft of joy right like comparison is a thief of joy so i just took a massive step and it took me two years to completely get off the platform like you know i started with limiting my use and stuff that didn't work so two years in i have message in facebook and that's it People call me or text me or message or WhatsApp me. So they, I know suddenly my my group of friends went to you know from five thousand friends to <laughs> yeah. maybe a group of twenty people. But, but those twenty people, no disrespect to your five thousand, those twenty people are probably more important to you than the five thousand so-called friends. Yeah, because those people didn't do like things out of pure friendship. Those people. I didn't know anyone, to be fair, right? Where about now I have 20 people that they call me on my birthday. They ask me if I want to go out. Like, you know, they ask if everything's okay. Like, do I have the time to talk? I do want to go there and there. Like, it, it, it's so much better than, you know, and it, it kind of sucks. Like, for example, me and you, we're still in touch, but I think yes. because of how, how things rolled for me and how things rolled for you, we both had priorities in, in like, like you had to get to a certain stage of life, I think, where you're not pulled sideways by things that have like great meaning. Like financial struggles are the most stressful things in life, probably, except you know loss of a close person uh, or loss of life. Financial struggles are quite high on the list of stress, right? So then there's job, then there is you know having house, then the head like house roof under your roof under your um, head and and food and stuff like that. And it, it, you get to this point when you and you pull sideways to those things. It, it's really difficult to keep on top of relationships and relationship with human beings is something we are predispositioned to have. But add to that mix of busyness, social media, and suddenly you, there's no time for anything else because no. they've been designed to grab like every minute of your attention. The like button, I'm sure people watch Netflix, um, the social media uh, movie, which is excellent. They just showcase how it was engineered and designed to grab our attention. It wasn't as, you know, they made in the movie, let people communicate with each other. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, Mark, what are you on? You know what I mean? Like, that's not the intention and it never was. So now it's a big business machine. So as you can tell, I have a bit of a, I don't like social media. I'm not sure if you can. Uh, well, I think I so slightly picked up on something and it's absolutely uh, fine for you not to like social media. Uh, I, it, it's people seem to consider social media that it's been here forever. It hasn't. It's been here for 10 to 15 years maximum. You know, I, I remember a time because I'm so considerably older than you. I remember a time when uh, you can smile. You can smile. It's fine. Yeah, I won't take offense to it. Uh, <laughs> You're just a few years older than me, it's fine. Yeah, at least 10. Um, but, um, <laughs> I remember a time when social media didn't exist and people actually got together and we would text each other on our, you know, 51 tens or 32 tens or 33 30s, all Nokia phones, I think you'll find. Um, and we'd say, pub, six? Yeah, no problem. 
and we'd meet on the pub and then we'd spend six hours getting drunk and having a good laugh. That was that was social media. You know, yeah. that was our our form of social media. Whereas now That's you see on Facebook. Oh mate, mate, it was glorious. It was glorious. Well, you, know. you had to go out and talk to people yeah, in real yeah. life. You did. And back then if you spoke to people, they didn't try to kill you with an invisible disease. So, you know, it was it was win win. Wow. Yeah, I know. I was probably Yeah. And fun fact, I remember time without the internet. And if I say something was twenty years ago, I'm not talking about eighties anymore. That is very yeah. terrifying. Because yes. it's, you know what I mean? If you say 20 years yes. ago, I'm like, mm, how old am I? What's going on? And like, even it hits me. You know what I mean? I get it hits you, but me? Thanks, man. Yeah, I know. Well, I know you are. You, 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 your skin's like porcelain, you know, and, and you are very young. Um, I tell you something. Mum came up for her 77th birthday. She came up a weekend oh, just wow. gone. And she was talking about me being in school and stuff. And she, she's like, oh, how old are you when you went into into Ellen Lloyd's class? And I said, oh, that would be the last class in primary school. And she turned around and she said, you know, that's like 23, 24 years ago that you were in that class. And I think it kind of hit me because I go through life not really concerned by time. You know, I, I don't really yeah. dwell about it that much. But when she said that, I thought about it. I thought, wow, I've really done a lot with my life. And I'm still quite young. Not as young as you, but I'm I'm still, you know, quite young. Um, good looking, yeah. Well, I don't know about that. You know, I, I, you know I've still yeah. got a full head of hair. I've still got a very good beard. None of it is grey, you know, and I'm pushing 40. Yeah. You know, it's it's great, mate, you know. I wouldn't tell you 40. I'll give you 40. No, I'm 37, but I'm pushing 40. <laughs> You're still not there. <laughs> yeah. But no, you know, I, I know you mean social, social social media, lots lots of aspects of it are well, social media is contagious. It is extremely it, it is um what what's the word I'm looking for? It is contagious because once you post something and I notice that you've posted something, I want to post something for argument's sake. But it it's it's annoying. It's very, very annoying. And I've yeah. I've limited my Facebook use in the past few years to next to nothing. Post one thing now and again. I think the last thing I posted was about this podcast. And I think I that before that was probably five or six months. Yeah. That's sort of like, the gap. If you think about um th- there is nothing there. Like no. that's the that that's something that really blows my mind. There is nothing on social media. It, it, it's, it's a nothing. You browse a nothing and you view a nothing. But that nothing has been engineered so well that you get attached to nothing. Like, you don't get smarter because of it. You don't get better because of it. You don't get any financial gain. We're talking about personal use. Business cool. use, great selling machine, right? Yeah. Great selling machine. But you, 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 you don't get better mood out of it. You do, I get an occasional laugh because I browse memes because that's what fuels me through the day and my friends. But it's a laugh. Like, that's it. Someone made a funny image on the internet. Haha, <laughs> that's what internet was for when I was younger. Exactly. That's literally what internet was for. And, like, suddenly people get, you know, overly attached to it with the whole range of teenagers being suddenly affected, the, 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 you know, the, the, the confidence of, of you mm-hmm. know, the body body image and stuff it's a big issue and it, it's been studied it's not something that you know i just made up there is no, study and data there are mental Facebook. disorders in, uh, um, that youngsters teenagers are, uh, are being diagnosed with because of social media use because yeah. they're seeing this person's going out with that person that depresses them and then they're seeing that they don't look the same as kim kardashian or some other celebrity and that depresses them uh it, it, it you know it, it it can be a very negative place a very yeah, lonely place. Yeah, a very lonely place. And that's very scary because we just got to this point where, let's say, men talk about their problems openly, right? Where yeah. we try to get rid of the balance, but like, okay, not get rid of a balance, but um, we try to, you know, get to the point of, let's say, same wage for women and men in workplaces. Like, things that should have been taken care of a way, way back, we just getting there. 
And suddenly there's the social media thing that kind of puts the progress backwards when it comes to, you know, body confidence. Because, you know, there was fashion was before social media. There's always this argument like, you know, oh, this has been happening since, you know, however long we've been on the planet. But not to that extent. Like, you know, there are pictures from the metro or like in, in New York where people in, in public transport, they read newspapers. And I was like, oh, everyone's blaming phones. Have we have been always antisocial. Like, but, but newspaper doesn't have the same, you know, it doesn't carry the same load of like overload, really, informational mm -hmm. overload as your phone, because newspaper yeah. has certain frame that you operate within. Social media don't. There's no frame that would hold you back. Like, there's a reason that they are the tools suddenly from, you know, manufacturers that, you know, dim your screen, make it black and white disable notifications like there was no such thing as a newspaper you read it you chuck it to bin ideally recycle because everyone needs to recycle and that's it done you just go on with your life with social media you have this thing this screen that you stare 24 7 and there is no stopping to it so there's the argument that it's always been happening but but we didn't have not in the same way not in the same way like we didn't have the part of universities the best universities on the planet researching how to make the technology more humane. There was no such thing how to make a newspaper more humane or television more humane. If you see a very bad ad, you had to flick the channel. No one does that anymore because everyone streams, so you're much more aware about what you watch. But there's nothing like that with, with phones, with social media. Phones, social media mainly, because you don't pick the content. The content is picked for you. Yeah. And that's the biggest problem. You're not a conscious consumer of the of media. People usually not. Like when you buy a car, you're affected by ads, by celebrities, you know, your childhood memories and stuff like that. You know, some people like Mercedes Benz more than the BMW. Then people say that BMW people don't use indicators. <laughs> and I say it's because you have to make at least 50k a year to see the indicator beam in BMW because it's not for poor people. And, and so on. It goes on. But to the extent you kind of aware of your choices even though it's slightly adjusted by you know things you've experienced before they still have conscious choice but in the era of technology most of that stuff is thrown at you so instead of reaching for knowledge i think people have to build walls how to limit that stuff which is ridiculous because that's just exploiting our weaknesses and that's not nice is it it's not, but that's exactly what they've done. You know, people want to be, want to have sort of um, validation of of their life, that what they're doing is good. And they want people to say that, you know, uh, what they are doing is, is correct and that they go about things the right way. So somebody will post something and they'll get 50 likes and they'll be really happy or they'll post something else and get 10 likes and they'll be quite sad because they haven't got as many likes as the previous post. My biggest issue with social media, plus just to say on that subject, it can also make very lonely people feel very loved as well. Um, I've got a couple of, well, one in particular friend I can think of who I'm not going to say their name, um, who actually responds in life better to social media than they do in, in reality, you know, face to face. Um, very shy, not confident, not good at talking to people, but on social media, they come out of their shell. My biggest issue with social media is when Mr. Mr. Zuckerberg got involved from a political standpoint with the all the elections around the world, and then with the misinformation of COVID, spread of COVID. And now, you know, people have called it COVID, they've called it a pandemic, and all these these idiot slogans but as i said earlier people won't go out of their way to read other sources they'll read one thing in one place and they'll go well that's that's definitely you know true they won't then see if it's on bbc news or it's on sky news channel 4 etc they'll just read it one place and then say yeah that's definitely what's what's that's definitely you know 100 percent the truth um so from a social media standpoint then do you want to see it limited do you want to see it got rid of because obviously you you sound i'm not going to say wholly negative but you do seem you have put social media in a negative basket i'm going to say well there are obviously there are obviously positives to it for example 
you know, if you have a, pri- let's say, private account on Instagram, you can keep your friends updated, right? Instead yeah. of messaging everyone one by one, you can put a picture on and, you know, oh, we've been here and there, right? For example, or, um, you know, like you said, people who feel better opening up on the internet rather than, uh, it's not new, though, that bit. No. When you had, like, IRC, you would join the uh, MIG communities and, you know, most people use their real names because... The internet was just a small place where everyone knew each other, right? Um, There are positives to it, but I think because I've been personally affected by the negatives, and I've seen how it kind of deteriorated my life, the quality of life. I'm not saying get rid of them, but that's the the current state of social media is not how it's supposed to look like, because exploiting our um, weaknesses in order to gain something is ultimately quite a bad ethos to follow because um okay let's say volvo makes cars that are really safe but yes they gain money for selling you a volvo but what you gain is a car that's very safe efficient blah 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 right volvo is just an example and uh, but everyone associates volvo with a safe car right yeah so so that kind of ethos makes sense that you know you pay money and you get the product right social media what do you get back except you get drawn into the whole spectacle the whole theater that 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 none of it is real really like again it's it's nothing and we are attracted to nothingness so i think the way it's been engineered is not great especially with like i know nothing about tiktok except it's random videos that people play it got to this point where people would harm other people for sake of TikTok. And I'm like, what, for views, what, what, do you, what do you get? Like, apart from top 10, getting probably some really well paid, you know, checks. What do you get from that? Like, why do you get drawn into watching what other people do? Why don't you go and do? Like, I remember when Twitch was like six months old. I went there, I was like, why do people like to watch other people play? Why, why are you not playing the game? What, what's so fun about... I, I just don't understand the concept. And all how wrong was I? That Twitch is massive now. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not against technology as well, because I hear that sometimes from my friends. I'm like, I work with technology. Like, we, as a company, work now. Basically, I'm a site reliability engineer for really good consulting called Amido. And we worked with NHS. We helped build a bot that is available online to answer COVID queries to offload NHS. And, you know, we, we, we work with tech and we use technology to help people to give back as well. Like, you know, we've helped businesses improve their websites, improve their uh, solutions that they have. Like we do those things to help other businesses, right? So I'm definitely pro tech, but that tech has to be used in a way that it can be governed, um, an example is Apple trying to, you know, close the whole system to the point that third party sellers, they can't fix the phone. Um, you know, that's that's not right. But they are, they're working on it, you know, and a lot of tech giants get a lot of like slap in the wrist. But with those social media, there's, there's, there's nothing that is really happening. You know what I mean? I think, yes, I see the points you're making. I think social media well I know social media was a social experiment and this is what a lot of people don't realize or they realize it a lot too late it wasn't set up for you under the it was it was deceiving people as 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 you said earlier it's not set up under the under the premise of connecting your friends it was set up under how much information can people mine about you and the amount of data now, for the past five years, it probably isn't that much, but previously, before we had these privacy controls where we could turn off uh, bots tracking us and turn off how much information we're going to share with with these companies, I'm pretty sure there would be a pretty comprehensive data virtual version of me, and I'm pretty sure there's a pretty conf- a competent version of you out there as well, you know, um, which scares again coming from a, an IT perspective scares the living bejesus out of me <laughs> you know? 
exactly. but again, I signed up with Facebook in 2006, I think it was, 2007, because I wanted to stay in touch because I was looking to move away from my hometown and I wanted to stay in touch with my friends and family. And I was hopeless at texting people, hopeless at ringing people. I'd always forget. And it wasn't because I wasn't thinking about that person. But as you said earlier, I was doing too many things. I was running away from too many things. Facebook ticked that box of everybody in one place. Send a quick message. This is before Messenger came out as well. This is when it was all built into the one app, remember? Back in the day. I remember. I signed up in 2007 as well, yeah. There we are. Yeah. So... And and that to me ticked the box. I was very careful coming from again coming from an IT perspective, very careful on what I gave information wise. Um, and I'd never give too much information on those things anyway. But at the same time, I was I was, I I I'd like social media for the positives. I can keep in touch with my mum. I can keep in touch with people that I genuinely care about, uh, and I can unfollow the people that annoy me. <laughs> and it ticks a box, right? Yeah. But it's unfortunate to say that a lot of people that I consider very good friends since I've had long COVID have <laughs> have pretty much said that it's a lie, it's made up. It, it, you, you, you know the conversations and you can't do anything to change those people. But this is another aspect of social media that I you haven't touched on. Yeah. And I'm going to touch on it now where it's dangerous, where you start to funnel yourself into these pillars yeah, because yeah, you start yeah, yeah. to unfollow people you don't agree with. You start to, you know, follow um, sort of follow pages other people follow, which are, say, for argument's sake, Labour, Conservative, whichever political party yeah. you're affiliated with or whichever one you like. And before too long, you turn around and your Facebook, to using, using just that one social media destination as an example, you are either in a very left-wing society or a very right-wing society or a very centrist society, you know. With... And willingly. Yes, yes. And that's what I noticed about myself about two years ago, where anything else that I didn't agree with, either politically or, or just from a, a se- sanity perspective, thinking, hang on, that's not right. I don't like that. What the hell? I'd unfollow it. I'd delete it. I'd remove it. Now I have a Facebook set up entirely for me. Yeah, which is dangerous as well. I did that as well. I unfollowed ninety nine percent of staff. I yeah, thanks, mate. Liked before. You're welcome. Tick the box, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> like nice. the business pages that I don't care about. I, I used to like a page, and then it liked the like. I used to like a picture. Used to like a page, and I. Yeah. What do I have to do with like custom exhaust made in some, you know. God knows why in Poland. I, I liked one picture. So I mean, I'm a fan of the business. Like, that's what they used to do. Farmville as well. Like, you agree to... Oh, don't play any games, mate. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, right? Candy Crush and all that. And, oh, I need to show off. Look. That's our new addition to the family. Oh, you've got a woofer. Hello. A woofer. And a staffy, no less. A yeah, really staffy. misunderstood dog. And a very beautiful dog at that. I do like staff Chipotle areas. Hello, boy. What's your name? Bella. Hello, girl. What's your name? Yeah. Bella. My name is Jakob. Well, where are you? For the minute, attention's been diverted onto your lovely dog, though. So you are out of the picture, mate. How she's cute. She's She's lovely. How old is she? She's 16 months. Oh, bless. She's a big baby. They are good staffies. She's a staffy whippet cross, I'll tell you that much. Staffy whippet. Wow. So quick. It's ridiculous. We did lose her um, on our walk to, uh, we went to Penifan here in Wales, because right now I uh, live in Wales, just by the border. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that little detail. I moved from Bristol to... It's only a slight detail, because if you're talking to a Welshman. Yeah, I live in Chepstow now. Well, it's not really Wales, mate. Oh, shut up. But then again, I don't even class Newport as really Wales. You probably class Wales as the like where mine is still there active. No one knows about, and that's what you call Wales. Pretty much anything in Swansea yeah. is Wales. Anything outside of Swansea is kind of trying to be Wales. If it's Cardiff, it's not really Wales. If it's Newport, it's definitely <laughs> England. 
<laughs> yeah, and Chepstow is technically Bristol because there's a lot of people who speak with Bristolian accent here. Yes, that much. exactly. Yes, I got a friend um, who lives in Chepstow actually. Oh, very nice, very nice. Maybe I'll, we'll, I'll see you one day. Him. Not just me. Well, that's not that spectacular then. Well, that's sport right. thing. I, I like to be the only one, you know. Oh Still. well, okay. Well, sorry about that. I'll You're try welcome. better when you move to another place. I'll forgive you then. I'm not moving anywhere after this. I, I, I'm staying here for Atlanta 500 years. Um, I'm not going oh. anywhere. Yeah, I hate moving. Um, but yeah, pardon my interruption. I need to take care of the family member, um, Bella. You know, stuff you to cross. But um, yeah, what you what you said about um, unwillingly, you know, signing up for stuff and not playing games as well on Facebook. Yeah, don't do that. Data mining, like, massive style. No one mind anything. Like, people forget that they willingly gave the data away. Yeah, yeah, they, they did. I'm so concerned about their privacy and like, oh, I don't like them spying on me. You post pictures on Instagram almost daily. What are you afraid of? Like, they already have everything about you from your geolocation tag to your IP address to probably your location. Like, yeah. what are you afraid of? Like, it's strange because we give that away. And again, I understand no one's interested in a shopping list because that's not really, really fascinating. Well, I don't know, mind. It can tell a lot about a person. Do you like dislikes? Yeah, I, I, I eat eggs, but I don't like the flavour of them. Well, well done. I don't really know what to say for that, really. That's not really a shopping list. Is it? That's one product. Yeah, uh, we replace a lot of meat products with... Uh, non-meat equivalent we try at least um yeah yesterday went to aldi bought two chicken burger equivalents and i had to throw one away it was absolutely disgusting but that will not put me off we are actively looking for stuff that is good and can be replacing the meat so you know it's not like we gave up after one bad burger because no, that's not what's been happening. We tried, we tried. <laughs> we replaced permanently beef in our spaghetti with corn or any other vegan mince equivalent. No, there, there is no other equivalent, it's just corn as far as I'm concerned, right? There is. Corn no, stuff is Esco, lovely. No, yeah. Esco has a, their own brand that's yeah. really good. Linda McCartney's fake hose and duck is absolutely amazing. Actually, yeah, I, I will. I, I will go back on what I just said. The Linda McCartney uh, red onion burgers. Oof, yes, they are beautiful. I would even go as far as say that I think Doug introduced me ages ago to a frozen vegan burger stuffed with cheese from Tesco. He had to tell me it's not meat. Yeah. I didn't realise it's not me. It was absolutely bigger delicious. And I used to be hardcore, like, you know, veg and vegan. So don't touch me. Like, yeah. why are you even speaking to me, you know? Which is different now because I realise how much I don't need the meat that I used to inhale in quantities that were just ridiculous. And how much, you know, affects our planet and, like, I watched a few programs about how animals are treated and I didn't turn a woohoo, I'm drinking kale shakes every morning. No, I just am aware that there's an impact that I make by my purchases. So I want to do something about it. Like I would think that would be people's, like, you know, your normal response to what you're doing is kind of killing the planet and you're really supporting the business that is exploiting animals. I'm like, okay, that's not great. It took me two years to change, but hey, who would have count, right? Um, that's if okay, small steps. If, yeah, if we want meat, we go to the butchers. Simple as that, support local and all that stuff. So yeah, that's also a big change. Um, is my dog destroyed? Bella, Beth? I can hear her in the background, what's, what's she doing? Uh, Ikea bag full of stuff, yeah. Is She's helping you unpack then, mate. Uh-huh. I'm sure if she would eat what she would unpack, she would be hyper and we have to go to the vet because uh, my um, cleaning wipes. Bella? Yeah, move those. Yeah. yeah, I've moved them already. I tried to mitigate the um, 
the epoxy glue is also out of the way now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well done. It smells that. lovely though. <laughs> it does. Yeah, not good if you eat it though. No. Have you tried? No super glue. I ate super glue. Why? When I was younger, I was making models, you know, Warhammer models, and uh, um, I got some, on, I got some on my my fingers, and I licked my licked my hands to get rid of it, and I I ended up um, getting some in my in my tongue. It, it, was, it was like, oh, hang on, that's I think it's like pretty pretty, a little sort of more yeah. of a chemically taste, and then I ended up licking my lips with my tongue and I ended up sticking my lips together. Oh um, wow! Yeah. Yeah. How was that? Quiet. Well, it was. I wouldn't recommend it. I think if it was a TripAdvisor review, I think I'd give it one and a half stars. One and a half stars. Mm. I That's tried what it. I give. That's what I give to new Lego sets that are now collectibles. I still like Lego, right? I like Lego, but yeah. they some of them reach like half a grand, a grand price tag. Oh, yes. Yes. I got the Minecraft sets. They were like £45 each. And then I went to buy, we went to buy Wally. You know Wally? Wally, the robot. You're looking at me as if... Of course you do. Pixar Pixar film, Wally, yellow robot, goes oh, around Wally. cleaning up garbage. I was wondering if that's like a Welsh version of Wally. <laughs> Wally. <laughs> Wally. That one, yes. That was, I think, I bought that for Hannah, for Hannah to assemble it because she loves Lego boxes. Um, and that was £95. Um, that's not too bad. They're Porsche that's okay. 11 is 385. Wow. Yeah. Hogwarts Castle was 400 pound. Yeah, but I that is colossal. Because, yeah, I think, I wonder if it's because I'm just a stingy git and I don't want to spend yes. 385 pounds. Maybe there's nothing wrong with the price of collectible Legos. Maybe it's just me who's the problem. I don't know. It is a lot of money to spend out, mate. It depends what you're going to do with it. I got a friend of mine a bar, that bought the Death Star. And he's super glued it together. And it's now this colossal Death Star he's got in the corner of his room. No matter what he does with it, isn't going to break. It's all super glued together. He can't take it apart. That, that was his aim. That was what he wanted. Um, and he cherishes it. He absolutely loves it. If it does it, like, if it does it, yeah, why not? Like, I don't think I could. Yeah, I think that's not my thing. Maybe that's why. It's like, you know, some people love collecting stamps. Yes. I'm a bit like, mm, okay, I'm just going to accept this as the thing you do, but I really don't find it as. And that's fine. Yeah, we're all different. We're all different, which is fine. I it's just good find to be that. Different. Yes, absolutely. We'd encourage that. Um, I just, I have, maybe it's because the Lego used to be a memory of, you know, uh, pick me up when I had a, you know, I don't know, something happened in school. I used to like right. ask my parents and they would say no. Uh, oh, of course they would say no. Um, and then for my birthday, I would get a nice set. I had the castle ones and it was lovely. And uh, we lost all the parts of my brother. But um, <laughs> I still remember it was like, it wasn't breaking the bank where I think because I'm an adult now, I'm like, do I pay for my motorcycles insurance or do I buy a Lego set? And part of me is like, <laughs> have you thought about just buying a Lego motorcycle, killing, killing two birds with one stone there? I have it. Well, look into it. I, I have a motorcycle. Yes. From Lego. Yeah, but it's not a life-size one, though, is it, mate? But that's, the, that's what I'm trying to get at. I'm not saying buy a toy Lego. I'm saying replace your motorbike <laughs> for a full-size Lego motorbike. Two birds, one stone. Mm. Yeah. I'm not sure how insurance is going to go about that. So what's the safety measures there? Well, it's none. It, it's let's see if we can spin this. It's it's a modular design, which means if you need to be a car, it can be. If you need to be a boat, it also can be. Um, from a safety perspective, it'll crumble on impact. You, you will be proper <laughs> fucked. But it, you know, I think from a you know, it's not as if you're not going to have shards of metal flying off every which way but loose at sixty mile an hour. You'll have Lego bricks sitting you, which is actually that could be something have you ever stepped to... stepped on a lego barefoot oh, mate come on yes, yes of course that, that should be a, an environmental threat <laughs> imagine a and e people trying to help you and they're like ow, 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 and they're like yeah no sad that guy 
let him fry to crisp because uh, yeah, somehow Lego go and fry in my story. But uh, they wouldn't go and help you because they couldn't, like, they just couldn't run on Lego. And I understand that. I'd be like, leave me to die. I completely agree with you. Um, yeah, more cycle from Lego. That's my aim for next year then. Um, Good. But, yeah, collectibles and Lego and the prices, man. And should we talk about inflation as well while we're on the topic of money? Yes, let's talk about someone I know even less about than what we were speaking about earlier. It's It's fine. Inflation is high. Yeah. That's what I know. Petrol prices are very high. I don't drive, mate. See, that's the good thing yeah. about not, not having it a vehicle anymore. It is amazing. I love vehicles. And the faster they are, the better. Which is not great because right now a full tank costs even more than yes. it used to. Um, it really annoys me that our government is trying to get rid of the devil's juice called diesel. Um, Which I think is pound fifty-five a litre currently at the time we're recording this. Yeah, it's got to like over pound fifty now. And yeah. they try to... So the prices are going up. Yes. And we encourage to buy an electric car that costs <laughs> a lot of money in order to charge it at home when they already look to change tariffs have to charge us more for the electricity. And I'm like, hmm, what else is going to change that our life is going to get more and more difficult? Well, considerably a lot more, mate. You know, yeah, I mean, no. if you consider, uh, I don't know if it's true now, but I know a few years back when electric cars started becoming a very popular thing, people, you were being asked to switch over to an electric car but the electricity generated when you plugged it in in the night was generated by a coal fire, a coal, damn it, a coal fired power plant. I don't think they are now. I think they, I think the UK turned off all coal, coal power plants about three years ago, I believe. Um, but at the time, well, it's, well, even now, isn't it, with 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 the way electricity is generated, unless it's generated from a renewable source, there is no point, I think, in getting an electric vehicle, whether it's a scooter, whether it's a car, whether it's a bicycle, whether it's a motorbike. There is no point because unless your electricity you're generated is renewable from the first point and yeah. it isn't impacting the earth, then what's the point in you buying an electric car? And actually, I know a lot more about this than, I, than what I let on. The batteries you can't recycle them. You can't break them down. So even when you go in for your six month or your yearly car or bicycle, bike, battery renewal, the old batteries don't get recycled. Nope. They get left on landfill. Yep. And what's even more interesting, from the data I had, and it may be wrong, but um, I looked up what's the CO2 um, cost of making a petrol car versus making an electric car. And I calculated on a Volvo XC60 that oh, you would have to, car. yes, you would have to drive that car for 250,000 miles to even out the cost of production of Porsche Taycan, which is fully electric. So you would have to drive quarter of a million miles in order to just get to the level of CO2 pollution that has been done by producing an electric vehicle. Never mind infrastructure, uh, it's bad. It's, it's non-existent, I would say. Yeah. Um, and yet we are pushed to, even though the technology for diesel cars, for example, went so far forward that BMW new system almost emits like it, its marginal values right now because they have another separate system next to the engine that cleans their whole NOx and CO2. Yeah. Um, and I think the most ridiculous thing is like Mercedes Benz produced a truck. The truck has uh, 800 miles range on fully charged batteries, right? That's not too bad. Yeah. What if I tell you a full fully loaded diesel truck has a range of 6,000 miles. Mm. We're just not there. We, we're just not there. Um, Tesla, 
£30,000 for the cheapest Tesla and Auto Trader used model with 150000 on the clock. That's 30 grand for a used vehicle. How much more life is on the batteries? Uh, first Teslas, apparently, that one has a unlimited warranty and free charging because they used to have that when they first released Tesla. Right. Yeah, doesn't seem like a good business strategy. From a consumer, it does, but from Tesla's point of view, it doesn't. Yeah, but they they did that. That was quite revolutionary. They started backing out of that slowly for you know <laughs> reasons. How started. much money they weren't making? <laughs> yeah, and Tesla is really clever because they sell the cars at a start for low, and they ramp up the prices. Yeah. So what happens? The old cars gain value because they've been purchased for so low. They don't gain value, but they don't drop in value because they've yeah. been purchased for lower entry price. And the ones that are sold later, they drop to the same level as the first sold car. So what happens? They beat the depreciation of the asset to the point where they can kind of control it. Mm. So, you know, you have a Tesla and I would love a Tesla. I just can't afford it. No. I would have to really stretch a budget to buy it outright because I want to buy things outright. I want to end up with like loans. Yeah, don't have HP, mate. Don't have loans or anything like that. It's just it comes to cripple you. If you can buy outright, buy outright from from where you go. You know, unless I, I you, fully believe yeah. that. Unless you calculate that, which with cars you kind of can, not to to beat the depreciation value. So if you buy a car that costs, excuse me, I'm on the phone. Thank you. You talk alright. Yeah, she's alright. She was just stretching, and I have laminate on the floor. Um, yeah, so if you can calculate what's the depreciation value of a car, and with a car that is less than six, seven years old, yeah. you can calculate that. Um, if you beat the depreciation value, you technically rent a car for, let's say, two grand in three years. If you sell it, you get majority of your asset back, as an asset becomes money again, so you liquidate the asset. So for a petrol head like me, if I if I want to buy a car, let's say Porsche 911, just an example, if I calculate how to beat the inflation and how to beat the depreciation value of the asset, it, I'm not going to rent a Porsche for, let's say, £5,000 in two years, right? I'm never going to find a deal like that. For some people, it's going to be throwing the money away. But if that makes me happy, it's as equivalent of buying £300 worth of Lego, right? Like with the idea that I'm renting a car because I never plan to fully pay it off, I'll sell it back, getting most of my capital back. So life is quite short, you may as well do that, right? So that's the only exception of the rule I'll say buy outright, um, only because I'm a bit crazy about cars. Um, I have a race car as well. I bought a 2003 Mini. Did you? Yeah, and it was a project, mid-lockdown project. So the project was, I bought a car and I made it up. So let's see, I replaced everything in the engine that I could, every gasket, every pulley. Um, I have coilovers, I have Brembo discs and pads. I have upgraded Teflon supercharger. Um, I have every bit of toolkit right now. My good friend, Will, who helped me tremendously, shout out Will. Um, he used to work in a garage and they would let me in. Um, to do the work there with things I That's couldn't true. fix. Very kind. It was lovely. What's the name so, of this business? Um, I think it's a G Tech Autos in Abergavenny. Um, but that was nice like they really. That place too. Well done. Thank you. I oh, I've been there a few times. They told me off for mispronouncing it, so I was learned. I bet they did. I was yeah. They're lovely chaps though. Um, and yeah, like Will would help me. He would explain to me that sometimes you have to bash it with a hammer. And uh, oh, yeah. it won't break. Yeah, like those are cars. I was way too delicate. So, so your race car, your Mini, you've yes, just been talking about the environment and how, you know, we should look after the environment and you're going over to meet sub, sub, substitute because, again, the environment and electric cars, again, environment. So where does your Mini sit in all that? Um, I rarely drive it. Oh, right. So that's fine then, of course. So I imagine, yeah. So I imagine what I do in my life, for example, by not commuting. Yeah. That offsets what the Mini produces. It's not oh, like... Your I'm... carbon footprint is immaculate like your face. Thank you. Oh, ah. Not 
about that one, that. Dude. that was really good. That, that was, was good. really good. Well set up. Great execution. Excellent. Seven out of ten. Um, oh, hey, where's the rest? You know, you know better. You you know better, but that was really good. Thanks, um, yeah, well done. Um, yes, Bella is satisfied as well. Hello. Yeah, so I I think it's um, I think it's a bit like because of what I do for work Monday to Friday, and I don't need a car. That is just you know I choose to take it when you know I want to go on a Sunday drive or I want to go on track. So are you going? Do you have that, plans to go to Castle Cool? I had plans, but I have a plan to sell actually a mini soon and uh, upgrade to something a bit more environmental friendly and a bit more cylinders and a bit faster. I think faster comes first. You're just saying environmentally friendly because I pulled you up on it. <laughs> what car have you got in your eyes? Uh, BMW M140i. Yeah, massively environmentally friendly. B58 engine is an absolute masterpiece. <laughs> it doesn't stop oil like N55. And uh, like it, it, it's generally, it's, I think it's exempt from the congestion chart. I may be horribly wrong, but the, it's, it's not with knocks and stuff. It's not that bad. Like Mini's worse. I am pretty sure Mini's worse because Mini is a very old technology. It's O3 yeah. plate. I fill that car full tank. I go pay, come back. There's half tank left. I'm like, I mean, the supercharger's drinking it. Yeah, it's like my car thinks petrol is for free, so it's all bothered about prices. So I'm like, okay, great. So like, as much as the joy out of that car goes, like, it's it's the only car you can, how do I put it? You can throw it in a corner going seventy, and that thing is gonna stick. It's a mini, mate. It's an old school British it's an amazing mini, car. low to the ground. They are they are road sticking machines. They are, and it's amazing vehicles. I think the only problem that I have is, and I think the reason why I want to get rid of it is because one, I fancy something different. Get a Lancia. No uh, BMW. I'm for, uh, Lancia Delta Integrale. I would love that car. But my neighbour in Poland had one, and it was more often in a garage than it was. So <laughs> of course, it was. Yeah. I want to. It's a good Italian engineering. Um, they should stick to designing. My personal opinion: they should do design and do the ge Germans should do the engines and stuff. German engineering um, is second to none. Absolutely. To, to be fair, with this being said, I looked at the other vehicle. It was 2017 onwards, Audi S5 B9. Right. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. It's a gorgeous car. It's a it's a three liter engine, 350 horse, big car. We're talking about sport back with five doors, and it's a hot V. So the the turbocharger is on top of the engine, which is not great from like dispersing heat perspective but every review of that car i've seen as a negative puts it does the job well so i was thinking what do they mean that a negative is that it does the job well basically it's a car that is so well designed and engineered it takes you from a to b period yeah. if you need to accelerate it will accelerate if you need to slow down it will slow down if you go quietly, it will go quietly. If you go eco, it will do eco. Lovely cruiser. But it's not that fun, which is insane. I thought that is insane, like, to put that down as a negative. And then I realized, again, my girlfriend is in the group of people that would want a car that is, you get in the car, it's safe. It's fast, it breaks when it needs to go from A to B with no problems, it's quiet inside, right? Me, if a car doesn't try to kill me. No, you're sounding like a, you're sounding like a very, you're sounding very much like a, a, like a very close mutual friend of both of ours, Mr. Nick, who yes. had an Audi and got rid of it because he, it, it was too safe. Yes. It didn't feel as he didn't feel as if it was going to kill him, 
And, and then Nick he bought has uh, a BMW and he can't turn corners in it. <laughs> Nick bought that car. I'm pretty sure he sold it again not too long ago. I think, I don't know, Like he sold the car. I think he had Audi A3 e-tron, which was a uh, hybrid. And he's got M140i again. Yeah. And one of those things made me think, I will love that uh, M140i because Nick is a massive petrol head and oh, yeah. he knows a lot about cars. And I think right now he works in um, creative centric. I think creative that's centric for all of your videography needs. Yeah. And he works with people like Tiff Nadell uh, from Tiff Yeah. Richard Hammond. If you're yeah. on Facebook, you would have seen his post. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I remember I he I remember he bought that M140i. He said he said it's next level. It's like it's a fantastic car. So I kind of see what people mean about the Audi. Like it's a great car, but like M140i, if you go too rough, it will spin you. It's fast as well. It can't turn because it's rear wheel drive with a really bad open differential. Like for some people, it's appealing. My all, all my petrol head car, friends, all petrol heads, they go just buy a BMW, rear wheel drive mate only. I'm like, what about Quattro? What about safety and wet? And they like, boring. What about snow? The, the funniest thing I've ever seen was. I was renewing my motorcycle test. Oh God, this would be 2006, maybe 2005, uh, in JD, J, JJ Motorcycles in Swansea, and which is right next door to BMW garage. And we'd had quite a lot of snow, so I pulled over to have a cigarette and just to sit back and you know just take in sort of wait because we didn't have a lot of snow, but it was a fair dusting. And there was a BM that was trying to get the BMW garage and there was a slight hill and there's a, uh, a sleeping policeman and the back wheels caught on the sleeping policeman. And I shit you not, it just sat there and span and he stopped and the car went back a bit and then he gently went forward. But he could not get this £60,000 car over a sleeping policeman. I've never laughed so much in my life. Yeah, and I'm not defending BMW technology there. We will drive will not perform as well as Quattro from Audi, for example. It, it won't. But the amount of snow we get in this country, it's laughable, which means oh, I'll be mean, fine. Let's not be like that. We, we do get quite a bit of it. <laughs> I'm from Poland. Let's, let's, not, let's not go down that geographical. Minus, minus nine for three months with loads of snow covering houses sometimes. We used to get, sorry, they used to get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just about to pull you up on that and say, who? Not you. Yeah. You're over here, They, <laughs> they get a little more snow. So when I've noticed what we get here, I laughed and walked to Asda in flip-flops and shorts because that was just what I would do in that weather, really. And I'm not bothered about this because, again, I don't need a commuter. I don't need a sensible car. It's more of an equivalent of, you know, £500 Lego to me. Um, yeah. And I'm a massive petrol head. So it's sad that the, um, it's an end of an era in a way, you know, like the petrol cars no more. I mean, you sure? Like, it does seem that everyone's going a bit, you know, too hard on electrics right now, um, which is sad because, yeah, I can't really defend a hobby that pollutes the planet, can I? Well, no, not really. And uh, I think, to be fair, you, you've got to think about how much petrol is left under the ground. You know, there probably isn't that much, you know, because we've, we've reaped and pillaged it for hundreds of years for, well, since the first, you know, since Ford's first car. Um, and it is about it is going to run out. Maybe not in the next ten or fifteen years, but it is going probably in our lifetime. But probably certainly yours because you're so much younger than me. Um, and it will run out in our lifetime. But and there's no alternative, is there? there well, is there is no... an alternative. The alternative is an electric car, which isn't very environmentally friendly. 
the only other there isn't an alternative for a long for a long distance vehicle. I mean, short distance is a bicycle. I still swear by bicycles. I think they're fantastic. Um, but at the same time, if you want to commute a vehicle, there is no other vehicle other than you have two to choose from: a car and every other genre that I, uh, that includes that Jeep, you know, SUVs. I'm including that under under car or motorcycle. Those are your two. Motorcycle isn't going to pollute it as much, but obviously the risks are higher, as you know, as I know. Um, but your car is your only long distance safe vehicle, really. But there's not enough evolution there, not yet. Not yet, but you know, electric is the way forward to probably give us some, give us some more time to work on. This. Bella, bed, bed. My dog is bed. Very well behaved. See. She's gonna stay there for ten seconds. Settle. So yeah, um, I think it's pushing the problem away, but there is no. I guess nitrogen would be a way forward, but it, 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 nitrogen shares the very similar um, story as Concorde. So. Because it's been deemed as about quite volatile um, fuel, right? And Concorde was safe, but it had the, it, it landed on a debris, right? And that pierced the tank. They fixed the tank, but public trust was gone. They just, you know, put the project to sleep. And nitrogen has been around for a while, but. Well, they put the project to sleep like 45 years after it was launched. It wasn't a, a, an immediate failure. It was an incredible success, but nobody would back it. Yeah, because public trust was gone. Like, all it took is people... repeated crashes. Yeah, okay. That's, it crashed yeah, a lot. Yeah. It did crash more than your average uh, yeah, plane. But, outside. but I, I see the point you're trying to make without me trolling you mercilessly, which I, I just can't help it. It's in my blood and it's it's awful. Uh, I but respect you've that. got to embrace it, you know. It's not, not yeah, about yeah, yeah. being a dick and not realizing you've been a dick. I know I'm being a dick. <laughs> I just can't try to well. stop it. I've got, I've got far too old now to even try. Um, <laughs> but the thing is, I see the point you're trying to make. The point you're trying to make is when Concord was retired, I think you're trying to make, when Concord was retired, there was nothing to take his place. We went back to Boeing 747s and, and the like. Same with the cars. There, yeah. there are cars, petrol cars, diesel cars, fine. And there are electric cars, fine. Let's put the environmental factor to one side, but there is nothing else. You need something, all jokes aside, sorry about the reference, you need something else like South Park. Did you see the one where uh, Mr. Garrison came up with the gyro, the gyroscope thing, that you sat on it? It was, I think it was called It, and you sat on it, and it, it well, for want of a better term, it sat in you. Uh, and it's it's a wrong episode, but as with so many South Park, it's hilarious. And yeah. that was like a 200 mile an hour vehicle. And it, it, the reason he, de he devised that was to stop people using aeroplanes. Yeah. But there isn't, go back to the, to the subject in a more serious manner, there isn't anything to replace the yeah. car. There is no third alternative. And a public transport, we all know the state of a public transport. It, 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 I quite like it. Okay, there's one person in Bristol that likes it, and uh, I don't live in Bristol anymore, so I, I don't count. But um, you, you know what I mean? Like, um, it, it it's like chasing that that, that pro eco stuff, which I am absolutely for. But it, there's no alternative that is given to the citizens, you know, and and that's not the way to go, in my opinion. Like, yes definitely fight the pollution for example you know limiting you know center of bristol and london so that all the vehicles have to pay more yeah it is a way i, I won't come up with anything brighter than that probably but there's no alternative like we're not given a feasible alternative electric vehicles cost a lot like like what else is out there that we could use? The, the, the answer is generally nothing. Like we got to the maximum potential of you know internal combustion engines, right? Uh, yeah, but I, don't you don't you also think that we're not go we're not evolving from a vehicular uh, 
perspective because there's too many important people holding shares in oil companies. I mean, what do you think you, that's the problem? I think that there's even a bigger problem that, you know, for majority of pollution is coming from 100 big corporations. Yeah. And you have your average Joe, that has sentiments me, but the average Joe is going to be, you know, told to recycle, to change a car to an electric vehicle, basically yeah. fork out the money. But there is a whole, you know, group of businesses that is fully responsible for majority of pollution and they just drag in their feet. Yes. And we have Jeff Bezos flying to three different countries on his jet and then telling us to not use, use a jet to fly for holidays. And then, then goes to space. And then travel to space to have a look. Like, you just <laughs> undone two weeks of not driving cars through COVID. Well done, mate. Like, okay, I don't mind that, but that's just not right, is it? Like, no. Nest, it's, it's as bad as Nestle selling water to the village that they got the water from you know it's it, it, it it's like yeah. it, fuck nestle by the way um wholeheartedly fuck that company i hate it um so yeah nestle is bad um, but there are all companies as well that you know pollute the environment and it, i just don't like the fact that it's us small people that we have to suddenly you know, I go to Asda and I'm asked on a till if I want to donate a pound to charity. I'm like, you donate. Like, the amount of yeah. money you make every day, you donate. Why am I being asked to donate? I I understand wholeheartedly where you're coming from. I think it's barbaric that a massive business can hold on to all their wealth, not get taxed, and then not give to charity. Uh, whereas, and that's a very that's a very sort of high level yeah. overview. You know, but then there's the likes of us. I donate to charities of my choosing, um, and yeah, I I I think it is very one-sided. You're right, but it always has been one-sided. It always will be one-sided. You know, the 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 rich won't part with their money. That's why they're rich, because they're they're shrewd. They they look after what's theirs. And if I had looked after what I had and not filled this room full of absolute bollocks, I would be rich. But what do you get from being rich? Like someone told me recently, you really don't want to be the richest person in the graveyard. Like, no, it hits home hard because yeah. I had an idea, right? And I had an idea that screams me left, right and center. I would propose that everyone who makes more than nine million nine hundred ninety nine thousand pounds get automatically sent a certificate of completion of capitalism they also get attached a bag of chocolate coins and anything <laughs> above that gets automatically distributed to people in need anything above that nine million i some people say oh what if you get nine million i don't i'm not going to get to nine million because i don't want to have nine million in my account i want to have nine million in houses i want to have nine million this and that Oh, what are you going to do about when you have a house that's worth 35 million pounds? Like, I actually didn't think that through. <laughs> now, there's other areas that you haven't thought through. Uh, allow me to just pick at a little hole there. Cause... I've been picked on that many times. Hit me. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone Thank so you creative, to allow yeah. me to graciously pick on this. Because um, you said nine million pounds in or nine million whatever pounds dollars whatever it was it was nine million wasn't it, it wasn't nine hundred million nine hundred nine million thousand ninety nine p there we go i'm not going to go that granular and then you said you're not going to have nine million because you're going to have nine million in houses nine million in everything so are you talking about pure monetary nine million sitting in your bank account or are you talking about nine million in assets because I that's assets. totally different and that no one needs i'll tell you that much no one needs a house for nine million pounds. I do, but let's not ask why. You don't need well, Obviously, you anybody to. watching this can see why, because my house is, well, yes, carry on. You you want it, you don't need it. Oh, the greed. No, gonna, you're wrong. <laughs> okay, you need the house for nine Thanks, million. Man. 
Yeah. Yeah, you're welcome. You have a million spare before I send you a certificate and chocolates. Mate, keep the chocolates, but I'll have a certificate. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, as fun as it sounds, like, how is it possible that, you know, there's a few people on the planet that owns, what, 80% of wealth? Yeah. And I'm like, like, okay, again, money is important in life. Don't get me wrong. I'm not some hippie trying to, you know, tell people that money is not important. No, it's important. But at the moment, the divide and the whole system is rigged against poor because poor will be poor and rich be rich and poor will be poorer. Rich will be richer. But if there's someone smart out there, and I'm sure there's a lot of people that are really smart there. The moment they would probably get into politics, they'll be swallowed by the political side of things yeah. because... You know, everyone say your oh, communism is great because everyone works for each other. Like, mm, but the system that really didn't work out in real life, even though it looks great on paper, right? Yeah. So it's like going around circles with the ideas that would be bounced back because someone has business into making sure people poor, pe- people stay poor and rich get richer. Like I don't know if there's a solution to that because I'm pretty sure there are a lot smarter people than me tried to figure that out before. But no one thought about certificate and you know completion of capitalism. That's a new that one. That is new. That is new. Well done. You know, I'm sure you'll get a Nobel Peace Prize for that, mate. Well done. Oh, um, I already got a Pulitzer as well. But that's you. Oh, well yeah. done. You kept that quiet. Are yeah. oh, you not yeah. on Facebook? Right. That's why. Yeah, you could read it in the sun in the column next to the weather lady. That was my entry. Um, nice. It, yeah, that's how much it's worth, really. But. Um, the, pro- the problem is with, with all of this, there's one underlying problem that I, I truly believe in, and that problem is the human race. When I, when, right, okay, let's, let's not use me as an example, let's use anybody else. It's very easy for people that don't make a lot of money or don't have a lot of money to turn around and say, I don't need this m- amount of money, because you've never had it. When you start making more money, oh, hang on, it's nice to have you automatically change. I've changed into somebody that I didn't think I'd ever change into. When I was steady 20, 23,000 pound jobs, I was like, oh, and I don't need all that money. You know, I've got my family. That was insane. Exactly. And then as soon as I started making major bank, I thought, oh, this is great. I started chasing money. Now, since having COVID and since going self-employed and since removing myself from full-time employment, to get better, it only hammers home with me the necessity to have a family and to have your friends around you and not money. Money is a nicety. Money is needed, yes, of course, but it's not the be all and end all. Yeah, so that's what I mean. That comes to the you know first point of why someone needs 300 million. Like, I, I do get that. It's nice because you have high quality of life and you know you live the life on the high but from what I remember when I was hitting you know my biological death I'd not seen cars I've not seen wealth when I was mid heart attack all I've seen was friends and stupid shit I've done yeah that's it like that all that mattered and the fact that there are people who have insane amount of money in their bank accounts now, why? It doesn't really matter that much. Like, there are more important things to life than money. I've, then... met, I've met one person that is very significantly well off. He was an old, um, when I used to be self employed many, many moons ago, 20 years ago, uh, he was one of my clients and he was extremely wealthy. And it seemed to me that the more wealth somebody had, the more wealth somebody needed because it's a very, they feel very insecure. And it it was, I never felt I could charge him the full amount of what the job would take to complete, because I'd never get it. So I'd have to charge under what the job is worth, because I knew I would have it. But he was one example, he's the only example I got, and maybe my example is so skewed and incorrect, but it did seem to me that the more money you have, the more money you need to have because you feel insecure without it. You think you're going to lose it. You can't, you don't want to go back into that realm where you don't have money. 
I'm a great example of that because I am like that. Yeah. I had a car, a Volvo S40, which was a really good car. Nice car. Very good car. It looks like a drug. It looked like a drug dealer's car because it had 19 yeah, four inch wheels. Yeah, yeah, I had tinted every window because that's how I bought it. A spoiler. God. It looked like a drug dealer's car. It was amazing. I loved it to pieces. I got quoted for garage work seven hundred and fifty pounds for all the repairs that need to be done on it, and I had like sixteen pounds left on my account to their payday. The amount of anxiety and stress I had because of that was ridiculous. Right now, we like right now I'm I'm doing well financially, you know, working for consultancy. Um, I will not you know, moan about money. I used to think that what I'm earning now would never happen. Where I make that money now, I want to hit, you know, six digits salary now. Yeah. And if I don't save enough in a month, I generally get stressed. Because, could, but it's it's irrational because you never yeah, had this wealth. You see, it's totally irrational. Yeah. But, but it it does that. The more you have, the more you need, the more you want. And I've seen myself do it. How do you think I can take four or five months off to get well? I haven't got insurance. I'm falling back on. I've saved, and I was only able yeah. to save because I had a well-paying job. Yeah, which is, I think, is a good point. That's we are in our own way where I think the mindful one, the being aware of the fact that this is a flaw in us. Yes. The more we get, the more we want. It's a flaw in humanity. And yeah, and then, like, you look like Eddie Hall in that picture, by the way. Beautiful man. <laughs> Absolute <laughs> legend. Um, yeah, well, you me could say like that. Oh, thanks, man. Me. Thanks, man. <laughs> both. Both. Shout out, Eddie. Um, yeah. yeah big shout out to Eddie. Yeah, I've got a lot of respect yeah. for that, man. I've seen him on um, Mr. Olympia in Birmingham recently. Went with my girlfriend. Really, really good. Lovely chap. Um, almost knocked me over because he probably didn't see me because I'm tiny um, compared to that man. Um, he just walked past me and I was like, oh, soft knees and all that. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I think with money, it's a very, it's a good point. The more you have, the more you want. And I think the only way against to work with that is try to be content. Mm. Try to find contentment in the fact that when you were younger, you couldn't go to McDonald's buy a sober meal because I, for example, couldn't afford it. But now I can go and buy myself McDonald's and I'm not going to be any poorer. I can afford that. I like that your vision of wealth has been able to afford a McDonald's. Is it yeah, a happy meal or is this a full, you know, large value meal? Oh, uh, it's a large value meal, or large. Wow, you're I, doing well. Yeah, because, you know, Big Mac is an international um, symbol. They use it to gauge how well the society is doing financially in, in what? countries. Yeah, because Big Mac is available in almost every country in the world. So the price of Big Mac... It, it's so basically it, it, the, the the mark is how long you have to work to afford a Big Mac. Look at this up. I've, no. I've never heard this. Really? Yeah. Please do. I'm not, making, I'm not making. I'm not making. A bit of a Google. Uh, I think you'll find the Google is going to say you're lying. No, no, no. I'm gonna. I, there's a name for this. If my keyboard would, if my keep. There we go. It's good something. So it's called. The Big Mac Index. So the Big Mac Index was invented by The Economist in 1986 as a lighthearted guide. Uh, as a lighthearted guide to whether currencies are at the correct level, it is based on the fear of purchasing power parity. The notion that in the long run exchange rates should move towards the rate that would equalize the prices of an identical basket of goods and services in any two countries. So. Right. It basically, it then been used to um, show, right, 
people used it, how long you have to work for a Big Mac, right? And how much is Big Mac worth in certain countries? And yeah. the same is with iPhones, where in Poland, you have to work 250, 260 hours to buy an iPhone. Wow. But yeah, in England, it's like two days, three days, something like that. So you have like real life um, goods and services that gauge how much you, you know, how much, how well you do. Um, so yeah, Big Mac index is a, is a thing and uh, really interesting to read about it. But, you yeah. know, the, the things like that, that you couldn't afford and you can afford now are definitely a way forward, like a nice meal with your partner, right? Like taking stuff for granted pushes you closer to the boundary of, I want more. Whereabouts, if you pause for a second, you go, well, that's nice. Like, I appreciate this in my life at the moment because this is not something I always could get. Mm -hmm. um, which I think that's why, you know, people who, um, people who came from like extreme, you know, situations when they had nothing, you only hear about those people who flaunt money, like Elon Musk apparently is self-made. No, he's not. His dad had a coal mines in South Africa. Bill Gates was a son of a very high exec in IBM. Like, those are not self-made people by any chance. Those are people who had really wealthy backgrounds that they could actually, you know, spread their wing. I'm not saying they not achieved great things because they did, but saying they've been self-made is a very incorrect statement. Um, and, you know, I, learned, I know a lot of people with, like, troubles in, you know, life, families and stuff like that. And they got to where they are now. And they are very like frugal and modest because they said that they, they, they can lose it again. The whole yeah. idea of losing again doesn't fuel them with anxiety and need to get more because they'll be fine. Like it's just materialistic. Position. That's why I said, I don't want to sound like a hippie. Um, because you know, it's not about not respecting money. It's about actually respecting money to the point that comfortable with the idea that it will not always be there. Yeah, exactly. You can't take it for granted. You can't take it for granted. Yeah. You really can't. Yeah. But I think on that note, mate, I think I'm going to have to call it a day. Because I am yes. knackered. Yeah, same. I don't sleep well nowadays. But you have long COVID, so I imagine sleeping is not easy. I sleep constantly. But I don't get any rest. Yeah. That's the problem. My body yeah, shuts down and I sleep and then I wake up and I go, oh, look, I've slept for 14 hours. And then I'm, I'm knackered, knackered. And past yeah. three o'clock, I'm screwed. But mate.